So in this video, I wanted to give you guys five reasons why I think you guys should try the New Balance 990 V6. Let's go ahead and jump in the video. Let's get into some words of what New Balance says about the product first. This is the New Balance made in the USA 990 V6. The retail is a little bit steep at $199.99. The 990's original design were tasked with creating the single best running shoe in the market. The finished product more than lived up to its billing. When it hit shelves for the first time in 1982, the 990 sported an elegantly understated gray colorway and a then unheard of three figure price tag. For avid runners and ahead of the curve tastemakers alike, the 990's were a mark of quality and superior taste. There have been updates to the design since 1982 and more color options, but the 990's status symbol aura has never changed. Simply put, the 990 is a shoe so good that we've never stopped making it. For the latest generation model, the 990 V6 features a streamlined take on the mesh paneling and suede overlay construction, plus fuel cell and end cap midsole technologies. The subtle and refined modernization offers an up-to-date pinnacle experience in the 990. So now that we have a little bit of background of the shoe, my first impressions out of the box, I mean, it looks like a new revised version of a New Balance 990 sneaker. It's pretty easily distinguishable from the 990 V5 because of the mid so it's much larger. It does still feature the end cap on that as well, but it does have the fuel cell, which is definitely an distinguishable feature, as well as just the overall panels on the side and stuff are a little bit different. Also, the TPU uh, plastic wings on the side of the V5 are gone, and now you just have a reflective panel over there instead. But I wanted to give you guys some reasons why I think you guys should actually consider this pair of sneakers. So let's go ahead and jump into those. The first one is history. They were introduced in 1982, while the Air Jordan 1 released in 1985. So this has a very long standing history. 90. 100, 10. Are these 40 years old? I I didn't realize they were that old. That's crazy. So the original Air Jordan 1s came out in 1985, and then you have the numerical sequences every single year where they release a new Jordan, and now it is 37 years later, and they have the Air Jordan 37, but here's where things are vastly different between New Balance and what Jordan brand has created. New Balance has maintained the same lineage with the 990 series, with the history of the cut and sew uppers and stuff on the New Balance lineage, and they've maintained that same integrity to the modern day, 40 years later. Meanwhile, in Jordan brand, we already kind of know that the luster is the Air Jordan 1 through 13, Anything after the 13 or maybe the 14 is just trash, quote unquote, in most sneakerheads' eyes. And then when you're talking about the modern products from like the 2009s onwards to the Air Jordan 37s now, they're really just strictly a technical performance product. There's nothing about them that say lifestyle and they don't segue over to the lifestyle segment of sneakers in the modern times, which is a huge fail if you ask me from the Jordan brand perspective. Meanwhile, New Balance has taken a shoe that's over 40 years old and while we haven't had 40 different versions of the model, they did pivot from a strictly running sneaker to more like lifestyle segment. This isn't a current running shoe really in this day and age. They have a running segment that's incredible with fuel cell and fresh foam and stuff. They have flourished on that side of things, but the 990 um, model has really maintained the integrity that it really had when it was first introduced as one of the first hundred dollar shoes to hit the market And that's why I think that New Balance and what they're doing here far exceeds what Jordan brand has done with their latest and greatest models Like the Air Jordan 37 the Air Jordan 37 sales are gonna be stuck on that narrow funnel of performance Meanwhile, these have a segment for lifestyle, which is pretty massive if you ask me I honestly wanted to do like a clickbaity title with how these are better than Jordans But I couldn't figure out how to do it eloquently without people like trolling me But if you really think about what they've done with this product the fact that it's relevant and the fact that they keep creating new versions. Like Jordan brand can't create a new pair of Air Jordan 4s or 5s or anything like that. Like those ones are amazing, but when they do the hybrid Jordans, everybody hates those. Meanwhile, New Balance has created a new model with the same sort of a TLC that the originals had with the, the cut and sew uppers on the shoe, modernized it a bit, but really it has the same integrity, like I said, of the previous products. And although it'd be fun to see Jordan Brand do something like that, I don't think we'll ever see that happen. Jordan Brand's captured that retro nostalgia, but how many times can they keep doing the threes, fours, and fives over and over again? They can't create something new, which is why what I think that New Balance is doing, creating the new version of something that looks older like this is like just ahead of the curve if you ask me. That was only the first reason to consider buying these. The second reason though is the cut and sew made in the USA look is definitely a plus. It's traditional materials maintains a timeless look and feel and to the untrained eye it might just look like a new colorway of an already existing New Balance model but it is a new model and it is made in the USA. I think that that is also something that is very very important about what New Balance is creating especially with that made in the USA collection. And if you guys want to buy these or anything from the made in the USA collection I'll link them directly in the description of the video. If you guys make any of those purchases, I do get a little bit of a kickback from New Balance and it lets them know that you guys rock with my channel. It's greatly appreciated when you guys do that. But there's something about modern sneakers that are made with cut and sew techniques that are not retros. That's just always so fun to see. And for 40 years of doing the same exact thing, 
Uh, it's pretty rad. Third reason why I think you should consider buying these, it is the most comfortable version, in my opinion, of the 990 uh, VX series that I've tried, or any of the 990s for that matter, because of the fuel cell midsole. Now, I will say it's not as comfortable as the regular fuel cell stuff out there, because if you guys know my channel, you guys know I love their Fresh Foam and their fuel cell line. There's like five main shoes that I think are absolutely amazing. You have the Fresh Foam X 1080 V12, which is absolutely amazing everyday shoe. You have the Fresh Foam X More V4, which is unbelievable as well. And then you have the Hero V7 Gore-Tex, which has uh, a really nice fresh home in that. But then we have the Fuel Cell Rebel V3, which is incredibly soft and squishy with the Fuel Cell on that. Very lightweight as well. And then my favorite of all of them, the Fuel Cell Super Comp Trainers. Unbelievable stack of Fuel Cell in that model. Just super crazy, soft, squishy, responsive goodness in that. I don't feel like this is the same fuel cell compound as in those shoes because those shoes are incredibly soft. But the fact that they have a softer foam compound inside this midsole, it's actually a lot softer on feet than the previous versions of the V5s or any of the 990s for that matter. It really felt soft and definitely like a little bit of squish going on in there. And I do wish that they would label the fuel cells like fuel cell compound one versus two or something to make us know that there's like a difference in the uh, compound because this is definitely firmer, like I said, but still really good and still a nice welcome uh, addition. And to be 100% honest, they shouldn't use like the regular fuel cell in this shoe because if they did, it would be way too soft and squishy and it would alienate probably a lot of the people that really like the 990 lineage because of the overall structure and feel of the other 990s. This would be way too soft on feet then and people wouldn't even know what to do with them. Like you lose a little bit of stability structure when you go too soft. And so I like the fact that they still have the end cap here that gives it the stability, but you do get a little bit of extra soft squishiness. The next reason why I think you should try these shoes is the wide foot friendly gang out there. You're gonna love these things, man. They're so wide foot friendly and they have so many wide versions of the shoe. If you're a bigger person, you have extremely wide feet, you're gonna wanna try these shoes and get the wide versions or the extra wide versions. They have them on New Balance's side. They even have a narrow version in select size is pretty crazy. I actually got a wide version of this, which might have been a mistake because uh, I honestly don't need as wide of a shoe as this one offers. New Balance is serious with its wide feet gang and uh, and some of the shoes I need wide, like the Rebel Fuel Cells, I need wide versions in those because they're very narrow. It's like a, a performance running shoe, right? This is not, this is a lifestyle shoe. For the most part, lifestyle shoes or like the more V4s or the Fresh Foam stuff, I need the regular versions, not the wide versions, because the wides are a little bit too big, even for me in the toe box section. So for anybody looking for a wide foot friendly shoe, uh, and you like the, the 990 vibes, like this one is definitely a plus. And the last reason why I think you guys should try the New Balance 990 V6 is because you can. And what I mean by that is that they're available. They're not selling out. They're sitting out there in sizes for a purpose. They created a bunch of them. And this is like the gray colorway, which gray and New Balance is like, white and red and black and Air Jordans and stuff. It's kind of like their traditional um, color blocking on their shoes. So you can get the gray colorway in all different shapes and sizes and in extra wide or narrow. And they have them in a ton of different sizes on New Balance's site. They also do have kid versions and women's versions as well. As for sneaker sizing, I would say personally they're true to size. 9.5 is what I should have gone with. Or I could have gone a nine wide maybe instead or I could have just gone a 9.5 regular. Any which way, the 9.5 wide is a little bit too wide in the forefoot for me, so I'm gonna return these and get a regular 9.5 instead. That's the size I'm going with. I'd say the overall comfort rating would probably be like a seven out of 10. Like it's the most comfortable 990 for sure, hands down out of any of the ones that I've tried. 992s, 997s, I've tried a lot of different ones, but this one is the most comfortable of all of them because of the fuel cell in the midsole. However, I give it a seven because it's not like the most comfortable across the board of like comfort sneakers. Comfort sneakers right now are like insane. There's so many crazy, crazy good ones. These are still really comfortable, just not uh, to the level of like the fuel cell uh, super comp trainers. The aesthetic rating, I'd give it like a 7.9 out of 10. I do like the updated look of the shoe. I think that it's really sleek looking. And even though the lineage is like 40 years old, I like the evolution that it's made uh, from the previous version, even from the uh, V5s to the V6s, definitely like the V6 design better. Alternative options on a lifestyle model that you guys are maybe interested in. I would say the 90s, 60s are actually really nice as well. Those are about 150, save you 50 bucks. It's not gonna have the 990 luster in my opinion, uh, but the quality materials are amazing on the 9060s and I love the overall look. It has a really nice vibe with the, the midsole. Uh, it's a little bit chunky on those ones. I really like those. Also for an even cheaper option and you want something from the 990 lineage, there is a 997s on New Balance's side. I, I believe those ones are right around $100 and so it's a really great buy uh, if you want something that looks pretty stylish but not as expensive as something like this. Just throwing those options out there. If you guys wanna buy either of those or check them out, I'll link them in the description. But anyway, my overall final thoughts, I think that it's a nice looking model. It's great to see uh, them evolving the line 40 years in 
introducing fuel cell into the midsole is a nice plus for myself. Really like the fuel cell branding on here and the comfort, again, not as good as maybe traditional fuel cell sneakers, but like for the traditional 990s, these things are by far the most comfortable 990s in my opinion that I've tried on. Uh, give you a little bit more heel squish than, than the average one for sure. The reflective hits are really nice as well. The fact that they have wide foot friendly is super awesome. Also, the only downside is that price point at $200 is gonna deter a lot of people, but it's very easy to pick up for those people looking, which is a plus. I'll leave it at that. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys wanna buy a pair, check the link in the description. And again, if you guys use my links, it lets New Balance know that you guys appreciate the channel and the review. If you guys do like the video and the review, please drop a like on the video as well. Subscribe to my channel, notification bell to uh, check out my other videos. And have a good rest of the day. Hopefully we'll see you back on the channel for some more content. All right, peace guys.